This video is about how to do a literature review using Google Scholar. I'm your professor, Dr. Stephen Haggard. So here we have the basic Google screen that we're all familiar with. And what I want you to do is go and type Google Scholar. Then click on Google Scholar. Okay, so what's special about Google Scholar? Google Scholar, unlike regular Google, doesn't search the entire universe of things. It only searches for academic articles. And if you're doing a literature review, that's what you're interested in. And so here we are, we're going to be searching for the topic of information asymmetry. And you notice I've done some searching previously, so it remembers my previous searches. And so here we go with information asymmetry. And there are several things that I want you to notice here. First of all, we have the articles that come up. These are from scholarly journals, like the Journal of Accounting and Economics. And you can see the number of citations for each of the articles. Now, it's not perfect as far as going from largest to smallest, but it's generally organized in that manner. And you can see that this paper has been cited by 5,633 people. What we see is in scholarly pursuits that the more citations an article gets, the more important it is in that particular field of study. And so we might be able to say here that the most important paper about information asymmetry is this one here from the Journal of Accounting and Economics from back in 2001. But you have to be a little careful with that generalization because the older an article is, the more citations it will have, regardless of its importance. For example, over here on the left, we could click since 2017, and now we have new articles. And notice this one's only been cited by two, this one's been cited by four. Uh, it's really hard to get a lot of citations up front because your article's new and people haven't had a chance to read it. So we'll go back to the any time. Another thing I want you to notice is over here on the right hand side, if your university has memberships to databases or organizations that allow you to look at full text, you'll be able to see those over here if you are at your university's campus, or I believe this even works if you are signed in through your university's VPN. And so that's really neat because you can just go out and immediately take a look at these, these documents. For the ones that don't have stuff like that, you may have to go to your university's library and look for a hard copy or attempt to find them elsewhere online. Okay, let's see what else we find here. Some of these have different versions. Generally, the way papers work is they start out as working papers and we'll take them to another university or to a conference and we'll present them and people will make suggestions for improvements. And then we'll come back to our office or our home and we will work on making the paper better and then we will take it to another university or conference and present the second revision. And so many times there will be different versions of these papers available. When you read a paper for purposes of literature review, you always want to look at the final version that was published in the journal, not the working papers that were earlier in the process because the, the final version is the one that everyone cites. And besides, it's supposed to be the most perfect one because it's undergone the most peer review. Okay, let's see what else we've got here. If you want to find the citations to put into your reference section, this is an excellent thing to hit. It's this little quote thing and it gives you the different citations. Now it's not perfect. For example, here with the Chicago style, the A and E in accounting and economics should be capitalized. And I believe that the each word in the title should be capitalized as well. But you can still save yourself a boatload of time by copying and pasting 
into your reference section and you just make those little corrections to straighten out the little problems. Okay, now what else can we look at? We can look at related articles. These are articles that Google thinks are in a similar family with yours. And here's one of my favorite papers of all time, Jensen and Meckling, 1976. Now, Jensen and Meckling, 1976, is a paper about agency. And you might be wondering why information asymmetry brings it up. Well, part of the problem with the agency problem is information asymmetry between managers and investors. And so, of course, that paper mentions information asymmetry. So now we're going to go back. And we are back to our information asymmetry search. Now, over here it says include patents. I'm not interested in patents. I'm not sure that anyone's got any patents regarding information, information asymmetry. And even if they did, I'm pretty sure I would not be interested. So I can take that off right there. Let's say I wanted to look for a paper from a certain year. I could actually enter in a date range here. Uh, sometimes I will remember the year that an article came out, and I may remember part of the title, but I can't remember the authors. Or I can remember the authors in the year, but I can't remember the title. This can be helpful to narrow things down. Okay. Let's see what the star does. Ah, it says save. So it's apparently it saves it to a list where I can look at it later. So that would be useful too. Now let's say I wanted to narrow it down because, oh my goodness, we've got 2.45 million hits. What if I want to narrow this down to the field of, let's say equity. That's a fancy word we use for stock. And here we go. Now we've narrowed it down to 140,000 results. And you can see that this first paper only has 1,274 citations as opposed to the 5,633 that we would see down here with Healy and Filippo. Now, that paper, though it has got more citations for information asymmetry equity, Google thinks that this Welker paper from Contemporary Accounting Research is actually more important, so it's further up the list. And so you can play around with this a lot and find a lot of papers from uh, your area of research. And one of the things you can do is look at which paper uh, gets cited by the papers that draw your interest. And so you'll see that that is a foundational paper. And usually there's going to be more than one. But you can then include that in your literature review. You'll know that that is an important paper from the area. And of course, the number of citations helps you to, to know what's important. Now let's talk about why this paper has so many citations. This is a review paper. And so what they've done is gone out and looked at all the studies or all the important studies that have been done on empirical disclosure which is a, an accounting topic, and they wrote an article about it. Now, these review articles are actually quite popular, and people will cite them when they don't want to write out a huge literature review themselves in their article. They will say, for an excellent literature review on this topic, please see Healy and Polipu 2001. I'm not sure I'm pronouncing Polipu's name correctly, and please forgive me if I'm not. Okay, so... Typically, though, if we're going to cite something that's actually in the paper, we would want to cite the paper that Healy and Filippo reviewed, not the review paper itself. Now, these review papers are also very handy if you happen to be a doctoral student studying for your comprehensive exams because they cover a whole lot of the literature without you having to read 39 papers, you can get a general idea of what each of these individual papers are talking about, and they're kind of the Reader's Digest version of those papers. Okay, I think that is about all I wanted to tell you about Google Scholar and Literature Review. Play around with it and see if you can find the things that you need and Always feel free to, to try different 
fact, when I click here, look at this, it gives me different suggestions. And some of these might be good for you. For instance, if your paper was focusing on information asymmetry and the agency problem, just click on that suggested one, and we're down to 311,000 results, which is much more manageable than 2.5 million. Best of luck with your literature review.